Hello and welcome to my channel, On the Hook Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. And let's find out what's been on the hook. A lot has been on the hook for this late week video, and I want to tone things down as I've been trying to do every Thursday and bring you a video about something a little more thoughtful, not so crazy in um, the speed that I do it. So I just wanted to uh, bring you a couple of thoughtful things uh, that you can use maybe even in your own crochet experience. The ability to design your own garments. Now, my patterns are designed so you can design your own garments and I do write them with many options and with ideas that you can use in order to uh, design your own garment that fits you, that looks the way you want it to, that's made with the yarn that you like, and the, also the hook that you enjoy using. That's how I design my garments so that you can design your own, and I welcome that. I think that's a wonderful thing, and I love to see your photos on the Facebook group. They are just so beautiful. Some of them are made just like I showed, and some are way off in another design uh, of your own and that's awesome too. First of all, let me welcome you to my channel. I hope you enjoy it here. This is a channel with information and inspiration, maybe ideas for you. So I want you to just take what I say and use it in your own crochet experience. So that is why I'm here. I like to welcome you and also to ask you to like this video, which helps YouTube know that you liked it and maybe others with similar likes would enjoy watching this video and also to subscribe if you want to see more. And I welcome you to my channel again. Hope that you enjoy your time here with me. Today I've asked Crystal to come over and show one of my designs in process and I am designing a new sweater and it is much more complicated for me um, than I'm going to make it for you but I have ripped out frogged out done all kinds of things to this design and she offered to model it for me this morning because it's not finished and I wouldn't look right in it so I wanted to show you how far I have uh, proceeded on this design and how I came to the point where I am now so Crystal is going to step over and she's going to show you the new City Shadows pattern design in the works. What I used to crochet this garment was a very subtle color and the color is obsidian and you have seen uh, pictures on my Instagram posts. If you're not there, please join up there so you can see how I work during the week. I usually post one or two or three different times with different um, photos of what I'm working on right now. It's difficult to show everything on YouTube so I do branch out and use my Instagram feed in order to show you how I'm working on different designs. So this is the City Shadows sweater and I am uh, crocheting it from City Tweed which is um, I've talked about it a thousand times. It's the DK version. This is not the color I'm using. This is um, a purple which is, uh, this is called brocade. Very beautiful color. I have several colors of City Tweed that I'm experimenting with, but I use the color Obsidian. And it's a dark charcoal with a lot of tweed in it. There's There are a lot of um, pieces of different color uh, wool that are just kind of randomly woven into the into the yarn and I really really like that it gives the yarn um, a great interest I don't know if you can see that I yes you can that is uh, turning out very beautifully now what I did with this particular design is I wanted to uh, design it with a v-neck which I have now a sharp V there um, I took out all the um, stench markers from one side and I cannibalized <laughs> I was using them in the living room I didn't have my big box so I took out some of these but um, I decreased along the edge here I've marked the center and I will mark the shoulders when I go to um, crochet the edging onto the neck I have finished one sleeve and this was a uh, a labor of love I'll have to say <laughs> The labor of love as you can tell from all the stitch markers on there now that looks more complicated than it is that is not as complicated as it looks that's two edges together 
See how I've, I've stitch marked the sleeve together so that I can see how it looks and how long it is. And then I have added a contrasting color here near the bottom of the sleeve. And the stitch that I'm using here is a motif stitch. This is a stitch that is um, co commonly used in a granny square. And it's a motif of three double crochets. Let's see if I can get this out here. Three double crochets and then you skip a stitch and then three double crochets in the next one and you skip a stitch. And then on the, the rows above, you would place your three double crochets in between the, the motifs that are on the row below. So it makes a, for a very easy crochet. It's not difficult at all to crochet that but decreasing you want to make the sleeve fit your arm and this is not a bell sleeve design this is a fitted sleeve design with um, a little color here at the end of the sleeve i chose red i could have chosen purple i could have decided on yellow i could have done any color i wanted but i had it in my mind that i wanted to use red so the color of this is romance in the city tweed line of yarn and of course if you're using another line of yarn you could decide what color you want to use as the contrasting color here and I'm also going to crochet the contrasting color around the neck and it's going to be very subtle it's not going to be a big wide edging out of red it's going to be very subtle along here I may also uh, add the red around the bottom I might I haven't really decided uh, more than likely I will but as a design element, it's, I think, better to keep your design elements either at the top or at the bottom and not have too many, maybe two design elements that are very striking. So I'm thinking that when I get the neckline edged in the red, that it will, you know, it will pull this design up to the eye so you can see it. And if I put another one at the bottom, it might detract from that. Well, I'll have to see. I may uh, crochet it along the front and try it on and see if I like it. And if I don't, I'll just frog it out. And that's what I do with my designs. A lot of times I will crochet a, uh, you know, a portion of the garment and then I will look at it for two or three days before I decide if that's how I really want it to look. If not, I will frog it out and try something different or not try anything at all, not put any design element where I've tried it before. I like a little bit more muted color for winter sweaters. Um, I, that's just me, but you can certainly use any color that you want to make this City Shadows sweater. I named it after the City Tweed, which is the uh, yarn that I used to make this. It's in the DK weight, right there you can see it. It's the DK weight. And the first word is City, so I used that. And then Shadows I used because I made it out of a dark color and I thought city shadows that sounds okay and we can remember the name of that. So this is as far as I've gotten on this design. I really like it. I've, I've wanted to make this for several months and I uh, finally got down to business. So uh, I wanted to do the sleeves in the three double crochet motif and I also wanted to not crochet the sleeves all in one piece like I've been doing. I've had several designs where you crochet uh, all the way across from one sleeve hem to the other, back and forth, and then you continue on till you get to the neckline. I, I didn't do that on this one. I finished the front and the back, and I'm adding the sleeves to the shoulder and creating them out of a different stitch. So I couldn't do that cross the way stitch. It has to be all done in one type of stitch if you're going to do that. I, I've not tried it another way and I guess I could try it but for this particular sweater I wanted to invite you into my um, thought process on how I work on a design and uh, how I come up with design elements to make a garment special. I want to thank Crystal for helping me out here and I'm going to let Crystal go back over here just for a minute. I'm going to show you what I have on. This is what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing the cobblestone sweater and I've dug into my winter sweaters that I made last year that I designed and I pulled them out and I thought this is so perfect because this is made from city tweed but it's in the worsted weight. I actually have no more of this yarn. I don't know. I don't even think I had a smidgen left 
of it. And I may have given it away. I don't know. But this is City Tweed in the colorway Lemon Curd. Lemon Curd. And I think they still have it. I went out to the um, Knit Picks website and I think I saw it out there. I think the lemon, lemon Curd is still a color that they offer. It is a beautiful... Uh, kind of a goldy yellow, but it's not boring. It's a beautiful color. Let me get up here where you can see um, the detail. There are lots of pieces of tweed in here. I don't know if you can see that, but um, this is what it looks like. This is not an easy sweater to make. I'm not going to say it's really easy. You have to pay attention when you're crocheting it. But it's not difficult, it's just that you have to pay attention to what you're doing. So that I can show you how I create these garments, I created this with the stitch pattern using the windows across. And then when I crocheted the sleeve, I decided to crochet it in um, just regular stitches. And then I added that design element here at the bottom of the sleeve to match the body of the sweater. You can see that. And so that brings the attention up here on the garment. I did not do anything special at the bottom of the garment. I just started my windows here and then I mimicked that here on the sleeve to uh, bring attention to the fact that there are design elements in this particular garment. When you make it, uh, you'll find that when you wear it, it, it just feels right. I guess because the elements are in agreement with each other, as we could say. But this is the this is the pattern. It's called the cobblestone, and uh, I I really really enjoy wearing this because it's warm, and it's a worsted weight sweater, so it's not for spring and summer. This is definitely for a winter time sweater. So that is how I made this. How I came to this design. So let's move on to talk about another design that I'm working on. Okay, for the thousandth time, I'm gonna talk about this pattern. This is the Marie Wallen pattern for the scarf that she's designed. And you can see the scarf, somebody asked me that. This is not a sweater. This is a scarf that comes down like this, and it looks like one piece, but it's not. It's the two sides of the scarf. She has them laid down there, so you can see the squares in there, and the motifs. And I'll get that up there where you can see it. This is also a sweater that's in the book that I bought. I really like that stripe. I really like that. I wouldn't mind trying to make that. Um, her patterns are very abbreviated, so, so um, I have to think really hard when I'm working on them. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to make this particular scarf. Now, I've, made, I've decided to make a change. I crocheted one of the squares, and y'all have seen this already. This is one of the squares. And I crocheted it in a much larger hook, and so it is now, you know, an inch and a half or two inches bigger than hers um, turned out here because she used a tiny little hook, and I'm, I'm using basically the same yarn, though. This is a very good substitute for the Rowan Felted Tweed, which is what she used. I'm using the uh, City Tweed for this as well, so um, the colors are gorgeous. I matched her colors, and so I'm using... Uh, in this particular design, I used the colors that she showed in her picture. The beige, the blue, and the dark green, and then um, edged it with the beige as she did in her, in her instructions. Then I started another one, and when I did, I realized that I really... Um, this took a long time to make. There are a lot of clusters in here, and it's a... a little bit involved. It's not terrible or anything. I just really didn't... Um, enjoy the process. I probably would if this was the only garment I was going to make this winter. I could do that. It wouldn't be a problem at all, but I'm not. I'm into speed, and I want to make sure that I can bring you lots and lots of ideas, and so what I wanted to do was make a square that I could do quickly and use the different colors. It's okay, because you have to tie in all your ends, and that's okay. I was just gonna do those as I went along. I didn't wanna wait till the end and then go, oh, I just don't wanna tie in all those ends. And then you stop working on your project. So it's good to tie in your ends as you go or crochet them onto the next row so that you're not at the end of your project so uh, despondent about having to <laughs> tie in all your ends. That's a little tip for me, but it's good to tie in your ends as you go along. So I made another square. This is one I came up with. 
using um, her design element of the large hole in the middle of the square and those are becoming more uh, popular as we move along. If you'll notice on some of the patterns I've seen um, have this large hole in the middle even on afghans and I thought that was interesting rather than pulling it real tight and trying not to act like there's a hole there. There is a hole there and you can start with um, more chains and you then put a lot of um, stitches in here. I'll have to see how many I put. I can't remember. And then I did something a little bit more open on the next row. Then I did the typical uh, three double crochets on the next row with a single crochet in the middle. And then I did all the way around just a, a row of double crochet and then uh, a special in the corner. You know how you do two, two, and two. Two double crochets, two chain, two double crochet. I did that on this particular square. What I like about her pattern are the colors. They are so gorgeous. They are not oranges and reds and greens. They're very subtle colors. As I said last week, I ordered a lot of these colors because I thought I might make this pattern as it, as it was written, but I decided to change the square to change the number of rounds so I'm not spending all day on one motif. And I'm going to make a cowl. I'm not going to make a long scarf. I'm going to make a cowl. I'm going to design it myself. And so this is basically my design using her colors and the design element of the large hole in the middle of the square. But other than that, it's basically not her square. <laughs> but it is her idea to connect the motifs together and make a scarf. Now I'm going to make a cowl so that'll make it a little bit different and I may publish the pattern. I don't know. I don't know why not but I was inspired by her and I would probably write that right in the pattern that I was inspired by her scarf and I made my own scarf and here's the pattern for it. So if y'all are interested in that let me know down in the comments box. I'll be glad to uh, be writing this as I go along. Otherwise I'll just kind of make it and I'll just have it. But I wanted to show you this. This is how I think as well. When I design a pattern, I try not to design something so difficult that you would have trouble, first of all, reading the instructions. I have conversational instructions in my patterns. I write as if I would like somebody to tell me how to do the certain thing that I'm trying to tell you how to do in the pattern. So um, I also tell you two or three different ways. If I can, I will put tips in my pattern that give you tips on how to make your garment look better, um, how to select the optional ideas in there. Uh, you may want to, you may not want to, but again, that's how I like patterns to be written. I had a comment last video that someone said they didn't like patterns that described everything and that's fine but my patterns do so you probably won't want to buy my patterns <laughs> everyone is written in conversational form so there are 50 patterns out there written like that and if you don't like that then you probably won't want to purchase my patterns but i write them for the general public and for the general crocheter who doesn't have time to try to figure out if something's the right way or if their hook is supposed to go here or there or if they're supposed to add a stitch here or there or which stitch it adds, which row to add it on. All that is very clear and I also give you fill in the blanks on the pattern so that when you finish your row you can check it off and then you can go do whatever you need. When you come back you'll know where you are in the pattern. So that's another thing that I do that I actually write on other patterns. When I crochet an abbreviated pattern by someone else I make a lot of notes, do a lot of check off rows. When you have two asterisks and you say do this three times I will write down all those sections of what I'm supposed to be doing and then I will check them off as I go because I'm interrupted a lot. So that works for me and so on my patterns I like to go ahead and give you the check off blanks so that you can just check those off as you move through the pattern. So that's another um, focus that I have on my patterns to make them easy to read and easy to work through the garment. And also when you want to make the garment again, which I do recommend uh, making at least twice my patterns or any other patterns, I give you the place to mark those off so that you're not confused about which yarn you used the first time, which hook size works for you. Um, all that is in your pattern. So when you have your pattern, 
you can say, oh, this is my cobblestone. I'm going to make it the same way. So you open it up and you see the hook size, the yarn type, how much yarn you needed, and what might have been difficult moving through the pattern, what maybe wasn't difficult. I hope you've received some insight into how I design my garments, how I write the patterns, and what my focus is when I do write the patterns. So uh, if you have any comments, put them down in the comment section if you want to. I'm always willing to listen and read what y'all have to say, any suggestions you might have. I have actually taken suggestions from my comment section and I appreciate all the ideas that you uh, leave down there, even the ones that aren't all that complimentary. I'm fine with that. Um, if you think that you might like to see different kinds of patterns, let me know. I'm not always um, excited about designing things that aren't garments. Now, this will be a garment when I finish it, um, and I consider a cowl a garment, but as far as an afghan or something like that, I probably wouldn't design it at this time. I may branch out. You never know. I might branch out and do some um, household items, dishcloths, things like that, that I might design on my own. I'm not really sure I'll be doing that, but I wanted to bring this particular video to you to show you how I work through a design and what it takes to design a pattern. The one thing I don't do, and I'll, this is my last point, the one thing I don't do is send it out to test crocheters. I don't do that. I design my patterns so that they will fit you the first time around. So I don't have sizing in my patterns. That's another thing I can tell you about the way I write. I don't have sizes and there's no extra small, no small, no medium, large, extra large, 2, 3, 4, X, 5, X. They're called inclusive sizing. Mine are already inclusive sized. You size the pattern to fit you at the very beginning so that you're not wondering, is this extra large going to fit me or do I need to make a 1X? Or is this extra small going to fit me or do I need to even size down smaller? You make the garment to fit you the first time around. So I hope you've learned something from this video. That's why I'm here. The late week videos are a little bit less intense and hopefully I've given you something that you can use in your crochet experience. Now I would like to introduce uh, a short video from Jo who has started making her project bags again. So I want to bring this video to you so that you can see what she's working on this week. Hey. Uh, the first one goes to Debbie, who lives in Kannapolis, North Carolina. And Debbie had a, a, a big loss in her life this past Christmas time. And uh, she wanted a bag that had butterflies on it because butterflies remind her of people that you've lost. And so it turned out to be a gorgeous bag. She picked this fabric out. The front of it has a really nice medallion on it, very pretty. has a little jewel in the middle of it. The fabric that I used on the inside of the pouch, I also used for both of the side pockets that she wanted. And then she also wanted a back pocket, and it has a dark purple lining to it, if you can see that. And it has a little uh, charm that I put on the zipper pull that's very colorful and has a little butterfly on it. Her stitch for her, um, the stitch that I used on her handles has a purple uh, thread and she loves the color purple and she loves the butterfly so I thought this turned out pretty well on the inside she has a clear pocket on one side and on the second pocket or the second side she has a pouch that has two divided sides to it one for like a cell phone if she wants to and then she chose to have a snap um, closure for the bag so it just turned out very pretty, very, very pretty. It's got a black bottom. And then I also made a little pouch for her that has a coordinating fabric. If you look at the inside of the zipper, this is the same fabric. And this little pouch holds just about everything you need for crocheting. It, so I put a lot of stuff in it that I use. These are great little scissors that I like to use. Uh, these are some of my crochet hooks, just some of them. I have plenty, as you do, I'm sure. <laughs> And of course, I have a little measuring tape. I've got my needle that I can work in my threads, my yarns, and then I've got some stitch markers. So this will be great for her to use, and I hope she enjoys it. Um, let me just tell you about these little, you might have had these, I already know about these um, scissors, but they're alpha scissors that are made in Japan. And um, they're great until you're 
10 year old um, granddaughter gets a hold of them and cuts paper with them <laughs> then you have to sharpen them up again so that bag is for debbie the second one is for denise and denise is in bridgewater massachusetts and she wanted a purple a col a purple and a cobalt blue bag other than that she didn't have any preference and she didn't pick out the fabric she let me do that but i thought it came together pretty well with purple and cobalt blue um, her medallion also is very pretty and it's got a lot of little um, stones in it here these little crystals and beadwork just turned out very very pretty very sparkly um, she didn't want side pockets but she wanted a back pocket and so on her back pocket I put a little um, I think you can see a little bit of that anyway it's just a little charm and then on the inside she's got uh, purple fabric and I use the same stitch on her handles that I used on Debbie's handles just using a blue thread instead of the purple and on the inside she has one zipper pocket that also has purple on the inside and another little charm on that zipper pull it's very pretty got purple and blue in it and um, and she has stitch markers so this bag will go both of these bags will go out in the morning um, and the mail will pick them up at my house which is very convenient I need to tell you real quick that I am wearing you might have noticed uh, one of Jeannie's patterns this is her cardi vest and made out of the plentiful fab uh, yarn and I'm going to tell you this is hot this is very very warm it's got a little bit of wool in it but I don't know if it's the way that it's uh, crocheted or what but it's it's very very warm and I made mine shorter than uh, she made hers that she showed so it's just a little bit shorter than hers but I really like it it's great for around the house it really does keep you warm so I'll put a plug in for her for this cardi vest pattern I really enjoy it so until I see you next time I hope you all have a wonderful week bye bye Thank you, Joe. We appreciate you bringing those beautiful bags to us and explaining how you design your own bags. So I think that's great. Thank you, Joe, and we'll see you next time. Quickly, one thing I wanted to show you is a really nice thank you note from LaDonna. She and I um, have something in common, and I, I sent her something, and she sent me a nice card. So LaDonna, I wanted to give you a shout out about that. Thank you for that beautiful thank you card. I appreciate now it. Now for the giveaway portion of my program. The first gift I'm giving away this week to those who uh, left a comment on last week's late week video and used the word PAST, P-A-S-T, and we'll get to that in a second. But the first gift is three balls of ZZ Twist by Lion Brand in the colorway grape. This is beautiful. It's a very rich color. Let me get it back here where you can see it. It's very deep and very beautiful. The second gift we'll be giving away is this beautiful ash wooden crochet hook and it is in the flat design. Look at that. It's a flat crochet hook. I didn't find it to be terribly difficult. It's not made for speed for me. I, I really prefer my clovers. So I'm going to give this away to giveaway winner number two. This is created by, designed by the folks at Living in the Past. If you can see that, these are people who make other things too. They also make historical soaps and other historical items. I saw this particular hook on another YouTuber's video and I thought I would give it a try. So I bought one and the value is $12.87. The, the, the hook was $8 and then there was uh, shipping and tax. So uh, that is the, the value of this particular hook. It's made from ash. It's a handmade hook. It's very nice. I really liked it. And I uh, smoothed down some of the edges so it might make it easier for you to crochet. Giveaway winner number two will win this flat crochet hook. Giveaway winner number three will receive the crochet calendar. And I've talked about this extensively on my, on my shows. I really love it. It's a beautiful calendar. Here are all the things that you can make if you win this calendar you'll have all of these patterns they're all included in the calendar the calendar is very beautifully photographed the paper is wonderful it's very thick and beautiful and even the front is so gorgeous she has uh, the designer has made all these flowers and has um, made a beautiful front for this crochet calendar so 
I would um, be excited to receive it, even though it's the end of January and we're into February now. So uh, that will go to giveaway winner number three. So let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who wins these three gifts. Here we are at the random comment picker fight by YouTube. This is the URL from last Thursday. This is the word past, which was the keyword. And let's find out how many comments we had with that particular word in them. So let's find out. Here they come. And that would be 414. Thank you for participating. Let's jump over here and find out. First winner will receive the ZZ Twist in the colorway grape. And that would be Joni L. Joni L. There is her word passed in her comment. So let's find out who wins the second gift, which is the flat crochet hook. Let's find out who wins that. That would be Jean, Jenny Miller. Jenny Miller, you have won the flat crochet hook. And there's the word passed in her comment. So thank you, Jenny. Let's go down here and pick another winner. This winner will receive that beautiful crochet calendar. Roxane Larson, Roxane or Roxanne Larson, you have put the word right there in your comment. So congratulations, you have won that beautiful crochet calendar. Congratulations to everybody and thank you for participating. Please send your mailing address to my email address, genie at onthehookcrochet.com. That is also written down in the description box if you need spelling and I will send those to you right away. Now we still have a few that haven't sent me their uh, mailing address yet. I have three gifts that are still waiting. So next week we'll have to do something about those three gifts. So we'll see what happens with that. Hopefully the winners will contact me. Next Thursday we'll have a drawing for these two gifts. I have two gifts for next week. And the first gift is three and a partial skein of basic stitch in the colorway black white. And basic stitch is by Lion Brand. It's a non-pilling, um, beautiful yarn. I've used it in many projects. I really like this. I made a um, shrug that was a pattern from Seta at uh, Seta's place. Cosetta Laws is her name and her um, YouTube channel is Seta's Place, and I watch it. I liked the, the, the pattern that she offered on her website, and so I made it from the basic stitch in the black and white, and I had some balls left over, so I'm giving these away. There'll be three skeins of this and 157 yards on the skein, size four, machine washable and dryable, 100% acrylic. So just wanted you to know that, but this is the gift that will go out to giveaway winner number one. It's three balls and then a partial ball right here that I went ahead and wrapped back up for the winner for next week. Winner number two will receive four skeins of ice cream cotton blend in the colorway Lemon. And this is an also an, a Lion Brand product. It is um, one I don't know if they really promote it all that much. It's a cotton blend, cotton and polyester half and half. And it is machine washable and dryable. So you can make children's clothes out of it. Uh, anything you want to be able to machine wash and dry, you could use this for. Um, I never got around to using it, so I thought, you know what, it's a great color for spring and summer, so I'm going to give this away. So there will be four skeins, there they are, four skeins of ice cream cotton blend by Lion Brand, 225 yards on the skein. So you have 900 yards of this that you can do something with. That's quite a bit of yarn. It's also, if I didn't mention it before, it's also a size four. So giveaway winner number two will win this yarn in the colorway Lemon from Lion Brand. Now to be in the running for next Thursday's drawing, um, put a comment down in the description box and write the word Lemon in your comment. L-E-M-O-N. Lemon. That is the colorway of this yarn. So it's called Lemon. Use that as your keyword in your comment and you'll be 
um, in the running for one of the gifts that we're giving away next Thursday. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you uh, were inspired and you maybe have an idea of something you might, might want to do. I hope you enjoyed the peek into my design process. So join me again on Monday when we find out what's on the hook.